Security Council meeting later on today. Well, in that meeting, the Foreign Secretary, James Cleverly, will accuse Russia of holding sham referendums in eastern areas of Ukraine. And joining us now from one of those areas in Kramatorsk in Donetsk is the journalist Stefan Weikart. A very warm welcome back to the programme. We spoke to you a great deal in the immediate aftermath of that invasion. Uh, give us a sense of what's happening where you are, especially as uh, you're expecting this uh, sham referendum, as the international community describe it, to take place this weekend. Yeah, so uh, I think people here in the streets are kind of like trying to uh, to get along with their lives. I mean, they are definitely paying attention to the news that came out uh, yesterday from what Putin said about that they will have a referendum held uh, on the other side of the front line uh, in, in the same region as we're in now. Uh, and uh, I mean, people are generally just uh, also extremely worried about the possibility that uh, there could be uh, used uh, different weapons, you know, that they're saber rattling with nuclear weapons. And in general, are people here also just concerned about daily life things, such as, for example, uh, that they have uh, many people out of work, uh, increasing uh, prices of electricity, uh, and it's really hard to, to just get food on the table. Interesting that you mentioned that. Is I mean, is it the case that people are, people are more focused on day-to-day -day life than they are on these threats from Russia at the moment? They're just trying to get by. I think that generally, yes, I think that is the case. Uh, where I am now, we are out, uh, out, outside the uh, Russian artillery distance, which means that we are in a little bit more safe area than if you travel uh, 20, 10, 20 kilometers close to the front line here. But there are still missiles hitting Kramatorsk. Uh, as, as, uh, as recent as yesterday, there was two impacts in the evening. You could hear here from, from the apartment where I am. And, uh, but despite this, yes, uh, people are a little bit more concerned about, about daily life. I mean, they, the missiles and the threat of having a missile dropped on your head is something that's been going on for, for the last uh, yeah, several months now, right? That's a daily threat. But, but, the, but the idea that they cannot feed their children, they cannot, you know, uh, just simply cannot get by, that's, that's something that people are talking a lot about. Uh, you have to understand that this area is uh, an area where a lot of people, they just kind of supplement their income from their kitchen garden, you know, that they don't really have a lot. And if they, this, the few money that they will earn on a job on the side is gone, then it's really, really difficult. What do you make of the nuclear threats that were being made uh, by Putin yesterday? Uh, we heard President Biden saying nuclear war cannot be won and it should not be allowed to happen. Uh, the Ukrainian government, are they making preparations? Do you feel as though, you know, you're, you're prepared for the worst? I think the Ukrainian government, uh, to some extent, is making preparations. Uh, for example, they're sending out these emergency uh, um, messages to people's phones, which is like test messages to say, in case of extreme danger, uh, we will get those messages. And, and, and that basically means like get down in, in a basement or something like that. We, we're getting them. I got two yesterday. I got one uh, about a week ago. Um, Oh, so, of course, it's something that the government is, is to some extent taking preparations for. But it is also, of course, really hard to prepare for this because we, we don't know like, if Putin really, really is going to do something like this. And, and people, of course, on the street is, is saying, for example, where I am right now, is saying, well, you know, yes, of course, it's, it's extremely dangerous if something like that will happen. But on the other hand, like, we can get a Russian missile in our head at all time. So it's not like... Uh, it's really hard to, to see necessarily for people just in their daily life, see the big difference between getting a, a missile in their head and then a nuclear weapon because they think they're in danger uh, at all times anyway. It, it's very difficult, isn't it, to, to try to work out how the international community is going to respond to this. I mean, we're getting very firm words at the UN, of course, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to make any difference. I mean, the, the more the West does in terms of supplying weapons to Ukraine, the more Putin seems to be seeing that uh, as a way to legitimise his further action. Yeah, that, that's definitely how it looks like. Uh, but we, we don't know, of course, whether his, uh, whether his uh, threat is going to be real. Like, he did say in his speech that this is not a bluff, uh, but we don't really know whether it's true or not. 
Um, and we don't know, of course, what will be the Western response. Um, as, for example, Joe Biden also uh, also was asked in, in 60 Minutes, where he also said there will be consequences, but didn't mention specifically which ones. So I, I think, of course, like uh, it is really difficult to say what will happen if Putin does decide to use nuclear weapons in Ukraine. Um, but we will just have to wait and see, I guess. Uh, but for people here on the streets, they are, I mean, it's, it's, they're living through hell in many ways uh, every day. And, and it's just, it's for them, it's just not another thing, another threat to, to, to build on that huge pile of, of, of problems that they, that they're facing every day. Uh, just finally, I, I just want to get your assessment uh, on these prisoner of war releases and, uh, and prisoner swaps that we've seen overnight. A sort of conciliatory, conciliatory action, I suppose you could describe it as. Uh, great news, Ukrainians celebrating the release of what they're describing as many of their own heroes. And on the other hand, yesterday we had all the uh, sort of escalation, saber rattling uh, from President Putin. What do you make of those two things happening at the same time? What does that message say? Yeah, it, it's really difficult to say. I was quite surprised that these prisoners were released uh, at this point, uh, especially after all the other things, as you mentioned. Uh, I think it's really hard to say at this moment. It could just be coincidence that is happening now. I mean, there has been, of course, negotiations uh, going back and forth about getting these uh, uh, these uh, SF style fighters uh, released, for example. So it could just be coincidence. It could also be because they won't like, have a back door open for negotiations. It, it's really hard to say. OK, Stefan Weikart, really good to talk to you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning from Kramatorsk in eastern Ukraine.